And so we're off the bat just, obviously I've been doing my research on you. I've been looking at your like IMDb, Wikipedia, Google, comedy.com pages, all that sort of stuff. And from those sort of things, you have like quite a lot of credits. You've been like an actor, a writer, you've directed, you've been listed as a composer once or twice. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's how I'd like to predominantly be known as a composer. As a, well, that was yeah, that, that was what I was going to ask you. So if you just had to pick one of these, like you know, you're going for airport security, you've met someone at a um, at a party for the first time, and saying, "What is it you do for a job?" If just like, one title, one line, like how would you describe yourself as a profession? I think, I mean, now I've heard composer. I'm really, I'm really drawn to it. I just think it's, it's got, it's got more, cl- you know what, if you, if you were at a party and you're sat next to somebody and they said, oh, I'm a comedian, you'd yeah. go, oh yeah, I bet you are, mate. No, we're, all, <laughs> we're, all, we're all funny, aren't we? We're mm-hmm. all funny. Mm-hmm. Um, anyone, can say that, anyone can say they're a comedian, you know, but if you were sat next to someone and they said they were a composer, oh my God, you'd really want to have a chat with them, wouldn't you? You would, yeah. That's, that's a step above songwriter, you know. Mm-hmm. Again, like, you know, some of my favourite people in the world are songwriters, Mm-hmm. you know but a composer it's it suggests you know it suggests arias it suggests operettas you know I feel like yeah um but obviously I can't I mean I'm trying to think of why I would be called a composer probably I wrote some of the sort of songs in some of the pappies shows that we did yeah. and, they, and they uh they yeah but um I don't know I mean I think it's all it's all comedian like it's mm-hmm. a, basically everything I do is in some way connected to comedy yeah. so I just think of myself as a comedian so when I'm writing I'm you know I'm a c- comedian helping other comedians yeah. be funnier you know I, all, all of that I, I don't think I've, I mean I've done no I've done no straight acting or anything like that I've done no I don't think anything I've done has been is to be taken seriously so yeah let's 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 go with comedian but I mean com- was there, so would you say there was a point in your career where you were like that's it I'm making I want to make this switch from doing live I want to start doing the I want to start doing the tv thing I want to start doing radio podcasts or that just kind of happened just like you said by networking and having friends that give you gigs and yeah it was always like it was all happening at the same time it was 2007 yeah yeah 2007 was when I stopped doing other jobs that weren't comedy yeah um and it was but that but um you know we were always trying to do, you know I was doing stand-up I was doing sketches I was writing on tv shows even pr- prior to that, bits and bobs I'd written for the radio. Um, I was, just, I just, I just always say yes to everything. I think that's just the the way to do it. So, and again, I don't, I've never sat down with my career and gone, here's my plan, here's what I want to do. I've always just gone, well, what's being offered? And at the moment, yeah. I'm not doing as much live. Well, the, the reason I'm not doing as much live is because, uh, A, the pandemic, yes. but even before that, there was just more writing around and you know and it was something I really really enjoyed doing but I do you know I do miss doing live stuff and I will do it again but I wasn't one of these people who during the pandemic was crawling the walls going I've got to find a gig I've got to you know I did some zoom gigs you know and stuff like that and it was fine it was good fun but it didn't even feel like the same thing yeah. Not quite like this, you know it felt like this really yeah like having, just... having a chat with people over zoom and just you knew that there were you know loads of people watching but um yeah and I don't like I, I think that's the one thing I'd say about like what what I've done in my life is I've never really had a plan I've always wanted to do comedy mm-hmm. and but I've just anything that that, that resembles comedy that people ask me to do I'd, yeah. I'd say yes and um and I guess the, 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 the like the live and the podcast is the thing that I've got the most kind of agency over because you mm-hmm. can kind of do it all yourself and that's what I like. That's what I liked about live stuff. Um, I loved doing Edinburgh shows. I love taking shows up to the fringe, but you know, uh, I never got to that level where that was, I, mean, I don't know many people who, who are at the level where that's how they make the entirety of their living. You know, um, yeah. you've always got to have some little side hustle. And when the side hustle becomes the main hustle, that's, that's great. You know, yeah. out of the things that you are doing and have done you know with your your sketch your stand up you yes. know like a bit, of, a bit of acting writing creating shows and stuff like what would you say is like just the favorite thing of yours that you do and this is going to sound like a, a a kind of um 
stock answer, but it's whatever I'm doing that day. Yeah. Genuinely, I have a, I have a night. I have a, I, I, I don't, you know, I'm never going, you know, if I'm doing the radio show, I'm not going, this is fine, but I wish I was doing stand up. Mm-hmm. When I'm doing a thing, I try as much as I can, as much as I can to be really present in the things I'm doing. That isn't always easy to do. Um, and, and occasionally, you know, you get jobs that you, uh, you don't particularly like, or you don't, you know, that's just, that's, you know, the, the, the rent paying jobs. Um, but I do as much as I can try and, you know, even if I think, oh, this might not be a brilliant show, you try and make your bit of it as good as possible. And I get a lot of satisfaction out of that. So I wouldn't, I'd never say, like people used to say a lot when we were doing sketch and stand up, or like all the pappies would do sketch, we all do stand up as well. And they go, which one do you prefer? And it would always be like, whichever one you're doing. I just, I just can't, I can't think of a, I can't, yeah. And if I think, I, I think that's what, I, you know, that's like what I like about this job is that I can do loads of different things. You know, I think I would, I wonder what would have happened if I'd just gone, right, I'm a pure stand up. I'm only going to do stand up. I'm going to focus entirely on stand up. Well, I know what would have happened. I would have been a better stand up. But, um, but would it have been as much fun? Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not. And I think that's, it's nice to, you know, it's good to have. That's the thing about this job is that so many people, take it so fucking seriously you know they like you know i'm not saying you shouldn't take it like and i think there's a difference between taking it seriously and working hard mm-hmm. you know i think it's really important to work hard and it's important to do it and important to do it well or to do it to the best of your abilities but people who stress themselves out about it or you know or are doing things that like people would absolutely chew their arm off to do and they can't find enjoyment in it they can't see that there's lots of you know this is like you know this is the if you're managing to make a living out of comedy at any level you've 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 cracked it haven't you you've mm-hmm. absolutely you've, you've smashed it because that's the thing that people loads of people want to do and it doesn't matter that you might not be you know you know working in television or playing all the big clubs that will probably come you know uh if you keep if you keep working at it and even if it doesn't it doesn't matter you'll still get you know you're still getting to write jokes for a living yeah it's a good thing isn't it i mean it's the it's the, it's the stupidest way to make money is to write jokes it's great what do you so if you weren't currently have, have the job you have working in comedy working in you know broadcasting and all that what job do you think you would at the age you are now what do you think you would be doing oh man Ooh, what would I be doing? I well, I, I I used to teach. So there's a good chance I would have stuck around in teaching. But I fe- I could feel even you know, even when I was uh, wet behind the ears, fresh faced, twenty something, I felt that was a that was a hard job. I mean, if if you want to you know, if you want to see broken people, you know, like, you know, forget forget uh, forget fifty something comedy writers, find fifty something teachers. Yes. Again, not everyone. There are plenty of you know, plenty of amazing teachers who love it and who, who see it as a vocation and really throw themselves into it. But I used to, you know, I used to drink with the teachers. We'd all just pile out of the school at three o'clock, and if we weren't, um, if we weren't, if I wasn't gigging, I would just go and drink with them, and we'd get hammered. And a lot of them were a lot older, and you know, we would, you know, we'd have three, four, five drinks, and then go home. <laughs> years like and this is like you know four or five days a week and all the ones that are older than me like 30 out of 30 years older than me, they're all having heart attacks and it's like i don't like, i'm sort of glad i i i could see i could see it even at the time i thought well this is fun to do because i'm in my 20s and it's nice to go yeah. out drinking admittedly most people in their 20s go out with people in their 20s <laughs> drinking and they don't go to a you know a little sad pub mm-hmm. you know uh, uh, over the road from a school but um but yeah, I think so. I mean, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd be, I'd be on my second heart attack. I think as a teacher, um, that's what I'd do. I don't know. Genuinely, like I, I think I've just I live in I live in such a sort of kind of fantasy world that when you said what would you be doing, I was about to say rock star. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, uh, which isn't quite your question. It's not what do, what do, other job would you like to do, yeah. but. Um, Composer, obviously. Well, I mean, this is it. I'd be, I'd be composing, is what I'd be doing. 
you'd probably have seen some of my stuff uh, uh, over at the Royal Festival Hall. You know, I probably, the, the Philharmonic would be doing a few of my compositions. The, in fact, I imagine, you know, 41, I'd probably, there'd probably be a sort of like 20 year retrospective mm, of my, yeah, my definitely. Work. A, a season, a season on the South Bank of, uh, you know, and I could, I could see that as well. A sort of uh, an arty, a black and white photo of me, you know, Probably still, still got, still got the hair. Maybe yeah. the, maybe just the moustache and not the beard. You know, to give it a bit more of a sort of, you know, like a maybe the beard's a bit more kind of trimmed in. Uh, look, looking off into the distance, black and white photo, and just the word Crosby, and people would know, you know. It, oh, they know exactly. You know, it would be Bach, Mozart, Crosby, yeah. one of the great, one of the great composers of our of our age, Britain. Yeah, love it. Um, but yeah, rock star. Was there a point where, like, what happened that made you think that's it, I'm now comfortable enough to leave this old stable job behind? Like, um, was it just like a thing of I need to do this, I need to just get in the deep end, or did you yeah, feel like yeah, you were? I, I was doing, I was like, I was doing comedy at the same time, so it was, there was an overlap. Mm -hmm. So I was teaching and I was doing comedy, and and you know that was fine. Um, I was doing, although I was doing supply as well. I, I, did, <clears throat> I did, I did teaching. I left. Um, and the day after I left, yeah, the day, first day of the summer holidays after I left, which would have been 2002, no, wait, wait, sorry, no, it would have been 2005 or six, 2006 maybe, um, maybe 2005, but uh, I got into the, the, the semi-final or of the uh, So You Think You're Funny or something like yeah. that. It was one of those. I'd, I'd been, I was, was I'd, and I was like, okay, well, that's a validation that I'm able to do this. You know, I, I took that as a, I took that as a sign, but obviously that didn't, you know, I was gigging all the time, but very, very rarely were the gigs pay me money. And, you know, uh, I was nowhere near making a living. So I went, I did supply and then it became a case where that was really, just the hours were really, really hard because you get a phone call at like, sometimes like half five in the morning mm -hmm. and you'd be asleep and the phone call would wake you up and they would say, okay, do you want to go to Stratford today to teach a, a class? And you were like, well, I've just woken up. It's 5.30 in the morning. The answer is obviously no, but if I don't go, then I'm going to starve to death. So yeah. you'd say yes, but you would have got in from a, you know, like if I gigged out of town, I could have been, I could have got into bed at like half past two, three in the morning from traveling so I might have had two hours sleep. So that's when it became like, you know, and to a certain extent, that's sort of what happened with live and writing work. You know, when you're trying to burn the candle at both ends, where you go, I'm, you know, I'm traveling to Peterborough or I'm traveling out to Sheffield or whatever, and I'm trying to get back in time to get to bed in order to get up to be in an, an office at 10 o'clock the next morning to, to write on this show, to leave at five, to get on train, to go somewhere else. You know, you, you, stretch, you find you stretch yourself very, very, very thin mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of that's kind of what happened but the the, the when, when we all stopped to to like stop taking on other jobs and decided to kind of go professional it was 2007 when mm -hmm. we got nominated for the edinburgh comedy award yeah so we thought that's it right we've been nominated for the edinburgh comedy award we're we're sorted now and it's mad how wrong we were i racked up tons of credit card debt that i didn't pay off until i mean five years ago, six years ago, maybe like really recently, ton of credit card debt, which just like hung over me and made me feel awful uh, for, for years. Um, we would go, we would be, we would, we would go for meetings all the time. We wanted to set up meetings with us. You know, You've got to come, we've got to have a meeting. And we'd always say, can we have a meeting in like a cafe? So that the, the, the production company having a meeting with us would buy us <laughs> food because we couldn't afford to eat. And because it was like, you know, this was like just, just it was like the tail end of there being money in the business and so people would always be like no 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 we'll meet you at like soho house and uh, at seven o'clock and we'll buy you drinks and we'd be like spend all day not eating writing our sketches and then we'd get to uh, soho house and we'd drink a load and we'd just be hammered and it was just you know you'd feel sick because you hadn't eaten all anyway so it was like it was like that um but there were yeah and, and then slowly but surely little jobs started to come in that allowed me to stop Flipping from the kind of different topic, obviously you've okay. had shows like you've had Bad Oats, those um, yep. hypothetical shows that you've yep. yourself worked on and created. Yeah. 
how would you say that experience is different from just from like creating a show how is that different from just writing on it or working on it or it's a great question the it's it's about how invested you feel in it mm-hmm. um so when a when a show comes on that i write that i've written on mm-hmm. i'm always happy and i'm always excited that it's, it's on the telly but often you show up you know sometimes you'll show up on the day it's being filmed and they'll go you got anything that could make this a bit better you know you know can you just write some gags here that could go here or, or write some intros and outros to these things or write some welcome backs and you uh, you know i loved i love doing that but i don't feel necessarily i don't feel like it's my show you know whereas um bad adults and hypothetical which you know from the from the conception of the idea through to the sort of the execution of it and the, and the, the edit um of the of the shows certainly in bad adults we were in the edit not so much in hypothetical but up until the they were filmed um it, you you were across every bit of it you know you know so many different aspects that you know um if you watch bad adults everything in the scene we'd looked at beforehand and gone yeah that's the right blender for this scene or that's the right wallpaper for that room so it's and that's and how can you not feel totally invested in that so um you know when when, when shows like when when when, back, when they when they did two series and they didn't want to make a third it was tough you know it was it felt sad in the way that if a show that i regularly work on they said oh we're not doing another series you'd go oh right okay well that means i now need to find some more some something else to do with that month you know, or I you know, that means I'm going to have to make a bit more money elsewhere. Yeah, I didn't. You know, there wasn't the emotional uh, connection mm. to that. That said, you know, after a while, there are shows like Last Last Leg that I love and I've worked on for ages, but I don't actually, you know, in terms of what the episodes look like, I don't have really much say in that at all because I write. I'm a studio writer for that yeah. show, so I come in on this. I come in on the day and I write a bunch of gags for it, um, but I don't, you know, I don't create moments for it or, or any of the bits of business that uh, Adam uh, Adam does. You know, that's that's all that's all their, their own work. But I still feel very invested in that show because mm-hmm. I've been doing it since 2013. You know, so that's a long, a long old, you know, nearly 10 years with that with that show. Um, but yeah, it's a different it's a different feeling. What would you say is like one of your proudest moments that you've had in your career then? Oh my God. What was my proudest moment? Uh, I think, I think filming the first episode of Bad Alts mm-hmm. just felt amazing. It was great. It was a really, really, you know, we'd worked really, really hard. Um, we'd written the script like five or six years earlier. Um, you know, not the actual script that we filmed that day, mm-hmm. but the, the first pilot script that we did and end up filming a, a, a version of anyway um we wrote it five or six years earlier it had been you know it'd been in at the bbc various producers kept getting turned down we kept it as like a spec script a, 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 the, the comedy unit in glasgow saw it liked it took it to bbc and and, and they, they got it commissioned but it was a lot of hard work to get it there mm-hmm. and um you know that I remember. I just remember being like, "Oh, this is, this is great." It felt like, um, it felt like you know, it felt like a wedding day. You know, it's like it was like it was just a, it was like a purely happy, purely happy moment. Uh, we'd just done a really fun show. The recording had gone really well. You know, it was just me and my two mates who I did comedy with. It was great. It was really, really good. All of that kind of stuff. And I think that's that is it. Like it's it's the work, isn't it? The work makes you feel proud. And it's not, and that was before anyone had seen it, anyone had reviewed it, anyone had said nice things, nasty things about it. It was just going, it was stepping away from it and going, oh, well, we're happy with that. And that's, that's kind of, because I think you can put a lot of stock in, you know, we've, you know, we've been nominated for awards and we've been, um, we've won some awards. And that's great. It's a, it's a lovely, it's a lovely feeling, obviously, because it means you're doing, the, you know, you're sort of the acceptance of, of your peers or the industry or whatever. But do it like the work is the thing. Doing really, really work that you feel happy with, and that's hard. That's a hard thing to do, to look at, look at it and go, yeah, well, I'm happy with that. 
And so that's anything that I'm really proud of is things that I go, oh, I, I did that well. And it doesn't matter if somebody comes up to you afterwards and goes, that was great. Um, yeah, you just go, yeah, I'm happy with it. Do you believe that there's something about you or your personality or your work or just anything that is that really helps you stand out in comedy in this in the, in the industry that you're in? Um, <laughs> no, and I think that's really um, like I don't know. I think I'm I'm, I'm I, I try not to be an asshole. Mm -hmm. I think that might be quite useful. People want to work with you if you if you if you're not you know if you're. I try and be a a um, a, a, a chirpy positive presence. <laughs> which is you know like i think that's quite a good that's quite a good thing to to be i have not always been like that yeah. you know if you talk to tom and ben and pappies they would say that's not always how i've been but I, that's what i've you know that's how i like I, I like to behave but no i think uh i think I, I i definitely think i'm very very lucky um i think uh i've just be, been in a lot of the right places at the right time and um you know, and, and, and also once, once I was given those jobs, I worked really hard and I ho hopefully did a good job. But um, so I'm not saying it's all, it's all been luck, mm -hmm. um, but I don't see myself as a particularly remarkable figure. And I think that, for, that is also one of the reasons why I sort of, sort of started to fall out with stand-up. Um, because I would see people, I was like, all right, you've got to, you've got to genuinely unique take on things hmm. um you, or you're just a really weird person that you know that's why I'd, that's why I, I love seeing people are like oh that you couldn't you know no one else could say this apart from you and I felt like there was certainly the way my stand-up was going not so much pappies I feel, I feel like we were, had a pretty unique style with pappies but with my stand-up I was like oh I feel like if I gave these gags to other people they'd probably mm -hmm. do fine with them and I think that was um, uh, why I sort of decided I'll oh, maybe stop. And I think actually that might be a, a, one of the things I'm, that stands me in decent stead as a writer is that I think, you know, you can write stuff that could be given to lots of different people. I, I also think I'm quite, I also think I'm, I'm quite good at picking up on other people's style. Yeah. Like I, I can, I can, you know, I can, I can emulate other people's style. Well, you have been, you have been dubbed one of the top five biggest yes men in comedy before, haven't you? So, <laughs> is that Brett Goldstein? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, one of the top five uh, yes men. Um, I'm very, yeah, I'm very, I'm very positive. I will, I'll take on, I'll, I'll take on what people give me, and I'll run with it. Like occasionally, I'll get a message, like I wrote for a comedian recently. Like I wrote for a show that had lots of comedians on it, and I was writing the bits for them to do. <laughs> without chatting to the comedians about it at all. I was just given the producer chat to the comedians. They sent me the brief, I wrote it. And I've got a message from one of them to say, I was reading this and going, how have they nailed my style so well? Mm -hmm. And then I saw it was you. And I was like, that, I mean, that actually is another moment where you go, that's a, that's a moment you feel very proud. You go, oh, actually, that's, that's, that's good. Because writing jokes are, you know, writing jokes isn't easy, but it's easy-ish lots yeah. of comedians can do it but writing a joke that sounds like it should have been said by josh or sarah or a caster or ivo or yeah. you know any you know darren or whatever you know like whoever it would be that's good that's a good feeling that's great thank you okay so um i think probably wrap this up soon but of course as this says um i shouldn't newspaper i do need to ask you um, if you could describe your career in 10 words and a sound, what would those be? <laughs> 10 words and a sound. Oh my God. It's my career I'm describing here, right? Yeah. Okay. You're not counting any of those words. <laughs> um, a nice, kind boy who tried his very best. I've messed it up here, haven't I? Because I try very best. Um, oh, thanks. Um, and uh, and the sound would be, um, I think. Do you know what? I think the the sound would be the 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 big 
inhalation of breath you do mm. after you've after you've laughed a lot because I'm a, I love laughing I'm a big laugher and I I, I enjoy it mm. so an, ah, like that you know that yeah kind of the the, the post laugh sigh his very best thanks sigh that's great I love that yeah that's good is that is that have I got it right yeah no I that's like that. I, yep I that feel was like I have yes yes definitely um oh. thanks Matthew I really thank you very it. much for oh, thanks for coming I really enjoyed chatting to you yeah see you soon bye see you bye, bye.